Being a pastor is something that is often full of joys, something that often brings a lot of happiness. But there are times when being a pastor is especially difficult. And I remember one of those times being the time I buried a four-year-old girl. Because what can you say in a moment like that? What, what can you even do? Because none of the usual things that we have to say about death work in a situation like that. It becomes hard to deal with, especially in the death of one who is so young. We see death in all of its ugliness in a moment like that. And I remember the Sunday after she died, I was getting ready to preach, but I wasn't quite sure what I was going to say because the text that I was supposed to preach on was something from Paul. And of course, God's word is always important. It's always good for our soul, but it's not what they needed to hear in that moment. Their souls were crying out for answers to God. And so I started to pray and to look through the scriptures, trying to find something to say in that moment. And I came across from God, Ezekiel 37, our Old Testament reading for today. This was the word that he wanted me to speak. Because this passage, Christians, did not only bring comfort to them then, as they were mourning her death, but it also brings comfort to us now, because it shows us that there is hope in the midst of death. Because God poured out his spirit upon Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord was upon him. And in his vision, Ezekiel was standing in the middle of a valley. It's probably a valley like Megiddo, some a place where many battles had been fought. And this valley was full of bones, the bones of the soldiers who had died in those battles long ago. Because in those days, Christians, after a battle, they typically left those who lost, those who were defeated, out in the open field. They just left them there. And that's what has happened here. And all that is left after this long time is their bones. And so you can picture Ezekiel walking around in that valley, surrounded by bones on every side. Bones at his feet, bones as far as his eye could see. And they were all dried out, showing just how long it had been. And God's voice came to him in that moment. Son of man, can these bones live? Now we might say, well, how could they? The life has been gone for too long from them. There's no way to revive them. There is no way for them to to live. All hope is gone. They have indeed been cut off. And Christians, it is all too easy for us to think that our bones are dried up, that there is no hope for us, especially when we are faced with the grim reality of death. Because we try to explain it away many times. We'll say things like, well, it was their time. Or death is just a part of life. When we're not looking at it, when it's not right in front of us, it's easier to deal with. Then we can talk about it. We might not even feel anything about it. But when we are face to face with it, staring it directly on, then it's not so easy to deal with, is it? I've been to many a funeral where people won't cry until they see the open casket, because then they realize just what has happened. Then the full weight of of it falls on them at last. And it is so easy to feel like all hope is gone in that moment. And I, as a pastor, have stood beside the graveside of many a dear saint after the family had all gone, watching their coffin be lowered into the ground. And the voice of God speaking to the prophet rings out clear in that moment. Son of man, 
can these bones live? But Ezekiel, standing in that field, surrounded by death on every side, simply looks to the Lord and says, O Lord God, you know. He doesn't go by what his eyes can see, because all his eyes can see are those bones, dried out and white. He does not go by what he thinks, because to our way of thinking, this seems impossible. But rather, he turns to the Lord, knowing that God knows the answer to this question. God knows whether these bones can live. And God's answer is clear. He says in verse 4, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Prophesy, Ezekiel. Preach the word of God to these bones. Even though they have no ears, they will still be able to hear. Tell them. Tell them what I am going to do for them. The breath shall enter into them, and flesh shall come upon them. The sinews will be laid in place, and skin shall cover them, and they will have breath again, and they will live, and they will know that I am the Lord, says God. And what a sight appeared to the prophet in that moment, Christians. Suddenly there was a great sound. The bones began to move, thousands of bones, tens of thousands of bones, all whirling around, coming back to their place, being put back together again. And in that storm of bones, in that flurry of bones, the sinews were laid upon them, the flesh came upon them, the skin covered them, and the bodies of those dead soldiers, which had been gone for so long, were there again all because of the powerful and living word of God. But there was no breath in them. Does that mean that God's word had failed? That they had come this far only to be cut off? Was there indeed no hope for them? Well, not at all, because God was just taking an extra step. And whenever God does something twice in the Bible, Christians, whenever he says something twice, he's showing how serious he is about what he's doing. He shows just how certain it is. And so he says again in verse 9, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. And as Ezekiel preached, the breath came into them again, and they all stood on their feet alive, an exceedingly great army. God's answer was clear. These bones can live. And God now shows to Ezekiel the whole reason for this, vi- this vision. Because Israel had been saying that they were cut off from God. That they were in a faraway land, feeling like there was no hope. God has sent us away, they said. How can we ever come back? Jerusalem lies in ruins. How can we ever know that we are God's people? The temple has been destroyed. How can we know that God is with us? Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are indeed cut off. But not so, says the Lord. If these dry bones can live, they can also be raised up. Not just in a vision, but to bring them back to the land. Because they had the one thing, Christians, the one thing that mattered, the one thing that brought life back to the dead, the unshakable and unbreakable word of God. Thus says the Lord, what more do we need? God has spoken. 
Who can deny what he says? God has promised this to us. Why should we doubt at all? And what does it matter if it seems impossible to us, if we can't see how? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Because listen to what God says, Christians, in verse 14. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. But Christians, we should not think that this promise was only meant for those who only think that they're as good as dead. God's promise was not just to bring them back from the land, although he kept that promise too. What God says here applies also to those who are dead, to those who have been laid into the grave. God is promising that they too will be raised, not just in a vision, not just in a metaphor, but in truth on the last day because God will open the graves of his people and God will raise them up from their graves. God will bring them into a new land, a perfect land, their eternal home with him forever. God will lay sinews upon you. God will cause the flesh to come upon you. God will cover you with skin And God will give to you an eternal breath. And in that day, Christians, when God breaks open your graves, you will see your Redeemer face to face with your own eyes. I have spoken, says the Lord, and I will do it, declares the Lord. And what greater proof do we have of this, Christians, than our living and resurrected Lord, Jesus Christ? Jesus lives, and because he lives, death could not hold him. The Lord of life has broken down the bars of death. The word made flesh shows us, beyond all doubt, that these bones can live. Because if Jesus can open his own grave... He can open yours too. If Jesus can make his bones live, he can make yours live too. Because listen to the word, Christians. Listen to the promises. Listen to what Jesus says. Because I live, you also will live. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Christ has made these promises again and again, and hearing them from the lips of our Lord, can there be any doubt? Those who believe will live. God will raise them from the grave. Death cannot hold them because the grave has been conquered by our living Lord forever. Therefore, Christians, let your Easter joy ring out today and in every day to come. Jesus lives, and that means that we can laugh in the face of death. We can laugh at it. Because what can it do to us? It was too weak to hold Jesus in the grave. What makes us think that it would be too strong for him now? Death has lost. Death cannot hold us. Death itself will die because Jesus lives. And we know this beyond all doubt because of what God has said to us. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus Christ is the firstborn of the dead. To him be power and glory forever. Amen.